the earth, something we need to bring to the knowledge of all of our members. And I'm going to read it so I don't add or take away from what we prepared. The elders would like to inform our members of the following. Due to the present situation with the coronavirus COVID-19 and the public health emergency for the state of Georgia, the elders have decided to make an adjustment to partaking of the Lord's Supper. Starting next Sunday, March 22nd, 2020, we will be using a single combination server. The bread and the fruit of the vine will be passed at the same time. The bread will be on top of the cup containing the fruit of the vine. We will still be taking the bread first, then prayer, then the fruit of the vine. We will use this method until further notice. Since the origin of this virus has not been identified, we are asking our members not to sit close, spread out, and please use the hand sanitizer located at each entrance door. Also, there are bottles of hand sanitizer on the back ledgers. Other adjustments may be coming as the situation demands. We will keep the congregation informed of any situation or situations that need our immediate attention or action. This is in bold print. Please note, we are not changing the way we worship God as directed by the inspired word of God in the Bible. Please direct all questions to the elders. Thank you, elders. Same thing I've got, it's an announcement, so we're, <laughs> we're good to go. <laughs> Looked like a lot of people took the elders at, uh, <laughs> sorry, Gary, uh, at their word, if you're not feeling well, don't come, because <laughs> a lot of us haven't shown back up tonight, but we, we certainly do appreciate the ones uh, of us that are here, and uh, Please turn your cell phones off. If you have one on, please turn it off or mute it. And if we have any visitors tonight, please fill out a blue card in front of you there and hand it to the outside aisle. That will be picked up when they count in a few minutes and, and uh, we'll have a record of your attendance. All members are at, and the members are asked to sign the uh, white card. The... Uh, We've already suggested about staying home. That goes for Wednesday night also. If you are sick and you feel like it could be something that is catching, or if you, especially if you have a fever, uh, please feel free to, to uh, not that I'm giving you permission, but the elders have said please stay home. If you plan on attending Polishing the Pulpit uh, for the, the week or for the weekend, please sign the list on the table in the foyer. Please keep, uh, continue to pray for Terry Glisson, uh, who had back surgery and is doing fairly well. That's what we can say right now, it's fairly well. So I hope to see her back uh, as soon as possible. Uh, Pearl Davis is doing uh, much better uh, than, uh, than Terry, I think, because she is back with us and we do appreciate, she is uh, we're happy to have her back. I talked with Nancy Colvin today about Ernie Colvin, and I think most of us in here know, know the Colvins, longtime members of Forest Park, and he is not doing that great. He has just been transferred over to another rehab center. He was at one, and then they, they put him in one that's closer to home now, not because of his uh, 
uh, because it's closer to home, it's because of the insurance can only go so far or so long. I'm not sure which one it is. It runs out after a while for rehab. So they have put him into another one, and he was compliant. I talked to him today, and he was uh, not happy about the fact that he can only get gets one. Uh, they come in and do the uh, rehab, uh, get him standing and walking on the bars that, uh, twice a day, but now it's down to one time a day, and he cannot even stand up and put his full pressure on his feet, can't even feel the bottom of his feet. So continue to keep Ernie uh, in your prayers. That uh, Ernie is always an upbeat, outgoing uh, man, but today, uh, talking to him, he did not sound like he was happy at all. And I would keep him uh, in your prayers. There are several that have ongoing health problems. can't name them all, uh, but there is a complete listing of, the, of these uh, in the newsletters at both exit doors and to keep you informed of who's sick and other important information. And with that, we'll enter in this evening's service, if you would bow with me. Heavenly Father, thank you that we are come back again this evening for to hear another portion of your word. We pray that we would uh, be attentive to the speaker and sing out uh, with our voices. Forgive us from our sins. Pray. We pray for the ones that are that are sick, not uh, particular uh, with uh, colds or flu, but with the ones that that have ailments other than that, also physical uh, problems with their their backs and uh, the other things that would prevent them from being uh, with us. Forgive us from our sins. We pray that we would have a safe trip home this evening. These and all things we pray through your Son's name. Amen. Good evening. We'll be using our song books uh, this evening. And first thing I would like for you to do is mark hymn number 402. That would be the song of encouragement at the appropriate time. Hymn number 402. If you go ahead and mark that now. Understand a few of us are working through some allergy issue, but we're going to give God our best. Then turn to hymn number 10. Hymn number 10. We'll sing the first, well, we'll sing all three verses of hymn number 10. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender. Humbly at his feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken. Take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, all to Jesus I surrender, Lord, I give myself to Thee, fill me with Thy love and power, let 
thy blessings fall on me. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Our next hymn this evening will be hymn number 255. 255. We'll sing the first and last verse. And after this song, we'll be led in prayer. <clears throat> hymn 255. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I homeward go out, Lord plant my feet on higher ground. Lord lift me up and let me stand. But a faithful heaven, faithful man, no higher ground than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost high and catch a gleam. Of glory bright, but still I'll pray till have I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Will you bow with me as we pray to our God? Father God, we come before you recognizing who you are, the most wise, the most powerful, the God of compassion, the God of mercy, the God of kindness, the God who gives the righteous judgment in each and everything that he does, the God from whom all blessings flow. We thank you, Lord, for all you've done in the past, and we pray all that you will do in the future will be for, for the benefit of your church and for us. Father, we ask especially now for six different blessings that we want uh, to be involved in our lives. The first one is the forgiveness of sins. Father, we're so thankful that you have forgiven our sins in the past, and we realize that we are very fragile creatures who do sin from time to time. We ask, Father, that you forgive us when we transgress your word as we repent from, from that transgression. The second thing we ask, Father, is that we pray for the blessings to be on the sick, the sick of the pandemic, the pandemic that is worldwide, for all those that are affected directly by it and those that are, are tending to them, Father. We ask your blessings upon each of them, and we pray that this evil for us will pass so very soon. We pray for those in the congregation who are sick, those who have, have and are receiving care or have received care in the recent past. We ask you, Father, to bless them so that they can return to us and worship you, the true and the living God. Especially, Father, at this time, we pray for Brenda Maynard as she is struggling through her health issues, Father. Strengthen her and help her and comfort her in her struggle. We pray, Father, for, for the missionaries, for the elders, for the preacher, for the deacons, and even, yes, for the office staff, that they have the strength and the courage to continue on to do your will in everything 
relative to their, their assignment. We pray for the Bible class teachers and for those individuals who are having individual and private studies. We pray, Father, that they will have strength and also determination to share your word each and every time they have the opportunity and to do it in the right way. We pray for the families of, of the members here, for each and every family. Father, our families at times have to struggle and we help each other, but we need your help because you are the one, the only one that can make things right when things are wrong. We thank you, Father, for being our God, for hearing our past prayers and hearing this prayer. We, we offer you our worship, though we're few in number, Father, we are devoted to you, for you are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. You have sent your son to die for us so that we can live. You have shown your love. You have shown your devotion to us. Please accept this worship as part of our love and our devotion to you. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Our next song this evening will be hymn number 113. Hymn 113, the first and fourth verse. After this song, we will uh, look forward to listening to Brother Spates as he brings us the lesson this evening. Hymn number 113. Would you please stand? First and fourth verse. Sweetly, Lord, have we heard thee calling, come follow me. And we see where the footprints falling, lead us to thee. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps of Jesus where have they go? By and by through the shining portals turn in our feet. We shall walk with the glad immortals of golden street. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps of Jesus where have they go. Good morning, everybody. Oh. Hello there. How's everybody doing today? Have you guys ever been to Walmart? It's like really big. Like, really, really big. Like, it's bigger than this church building. Like, I'm pretty sure if you really wanted to, you could play an excellent game of hide and seek in Walmart. I mean, it's so big. When there's tornadoes or like bad storms, you can actually go into Walmart and be safe. But imagine that being someone such as, you know, Jada size maybe perhaps, and you get lost in Walmart. That place so big that you can play an excellent game of hide and seek. Imagine you grabbing an excellent box of Hot Pockets because, you know, breakfast tomorrow is going to be phenomenal. And then you turn around and your mom is gone. She just houdini away into the aisle next to you. But you're so small that you don't know, you, you don't know that because you're not tall. You can't see over the aisle. But you saw those Hot Pockets and your mom was like, yeah, I'm going to munch on these. Or someone like Carmine size, you go to Walmart and you see that really cool Beyblade. It's your favorite one. And you think about 
the fun times you've had with, with your friends. It's your favorite TV show. But then you look behind you, and your dad's gone. And you're like, where'd he go? He has the keys, and I'm too young, young to drive. How am I going to get home? I speak from experience, by the way. <laughs> Have you ever been in the world, like planet Earth? It's pretty big. Like, it's so big to go from America to Germany, you have to use a plane. So big that that game of hide and seek, you would never find me. So big that you have to have multiple leaders to keep the world in check. So big, it took God seven days to make it perfectly. But imagine being lost in this world. Imagine a world so big that you can be lost in the rainy weather here while your friends and family are over here enjoying the sunshine and the really nice warm weather. Imagine that. Now imagine our numbers and we're enjoying the sunlight. And imagine those we know, co-workers, friends, peers, classmates, who are in the rainy weather and that are lost. I want to go back in time um, to a time when this world was, in my eyes, a better state. But in 2012, I wasn't on social media like that because I was still playing with toys. So maybe it's just me. But imagine you're coming home from school, or me actually coming home from school, having a really fun and entertaining road session with your best friends on, in, the, in the back of the bus. Um, the weather's nice outside. And the previous day, you have bought that brand new Beyblade, which is your favorite one. And your friends are smack talking your Beyblade skills. Um, so you're just devising a plan to just let it rip on all your enemies. Because, you know, when it gets competitive, there is no such thing as friends. But before we continue, for you older people out in the crowd, let me explain what a Beyblade is. Beyblade is a game where two people compete with spinning tops. Uh, you have a contraption and a ripcord with the Beyblade, which is that toy you see spinning, connected to it. And the way you start the game is you say, three, two, one, let it rip. And then you have stadiums that are designed to hold the Beyblades in this specific arena. And, they, and the winner is decided by whichever Beyblade um, is standing or whichever one spins the longest. Uh, for you older folk, it's kind of compared to that thing right there. It's kind of a the best comparison that I could find. But, um, it's kind of, it's kind of weird how I see a lot of people these days who always want to um, give their opinions on things, um, and yet they either A, don't know the facts, or they know the facts, but they don't want to apply the facts because the facts don't, long go, don't go along with their opinions. Uh, please turn with me in your Bibles to Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. And it says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. It says go into all the world. You know, that super big place where you have to have planes to fly to different countries. That super big place where it could be raining here and over there it's sunny. Because when I was younger, I thought if it was raining over my head, it was raining everywhere. 
But maybe, maybe that's just me. I was kind of an odd child growing up. This is how my parents. Um, that same place that can hold billions of people. That same place that Jesus walked and he went into all the world and preached the gospel. So if he can do it, what prevents us from doing it? He's God's son. He is the chosen one. Okay? So was Luke Skywalker, but Obi-Wan Kenobi was right at his side. Luke Skywalker was the chosen one going into all the galaxy and fighting the, the uh, separatist. But who would write that next to him? Obi-Wan Kenobi. We're going to read the parable of the lost coin. So turn with me to Luke chapter 15, please. And we'll be uh, focusing on just two of the three parables here. Um, I'm going to start off with the lost coin. So it's going to be Luke chapter 15, verses 8 through 10. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God when over one sinner who repents. Now we're going to go back to, to 2012, that wonderful Beyblade that you just bought. Now imagine you get home and it's gone. You had it sitting on your bed when you left for school. Uh, it was still in the packaging. But you get home and it's gone. But that's also kind of your fault because your room's a mess. And according to your mom, your room is always dirty, and you never clean it. So you, what do you do? You turn your room upside down, you flick your lights on, and you start frantically throwing around sheets, tearing up your closet, tearing up your bed, until you find it. Sitting under your bed, still in its packaging, safe and sound. And you rejoice. You're super happy, you rip the packaging open, you piece it together, and you get ready to go slay your enemies who are down the street. You've mastered all the moves, you know every command by heart, your power level is over 9,000, and you see your friends in the driveway playing, and they smile at you, but you don't smile back because the time has come to let it rip. Next, we're going to be reading the parable of the lost son, which is Luke chapter 15, verse 11 through 19. I'm going to read the whole thing through, and then we're going to go back, and we're going to highlight the key points and then bre break them down. Then he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the, proportion, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided them, his, li his, his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will go to him and say, Father, 
I have sinned against you and heaven before you. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And when he arose and came to his father, oh, sorry. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his head, on his hand, I'm sorry, and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. And we're actually going to stop right here. I'm going to go back and we're going to apply this to our lives. Because to me personally, it's all about the application. You can't apply something to your life that you do not fully understand. And, and if you have knowledge of something, of a fact, of something that can help you in life, but you don't apply it, then you're wasting space and it is worthless to you. So I'm going to start off with the first thing that stood out to me. Through his father, the son had everything he could ever want. Roof over his head, servants that would were possibly catering to him, had everything he ever wanted, all the Beyblades he ever wanted. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we have everything we could ever want. A loving family here at the church and promises of wealth beyond our imagination in heaven. The son took his inheritance and left, went to another country. We make a mistake and we think that we can live our life without God. And we start sinning consistently, not attending church, abiding in the world. What happens next? A great famine, famine comes upon the land. And the son loses everything and becomes a servant himself. The very thing that catered to him his entire life, he has now become that thing. You are straying further from God each day. And because you have fallen away, God is no longer with you. And you lose all of your heavenly inheritance. The son thinks about his father's servants and how well off they are compared to him. They are in the sunny, nice weather having fun. And he is in a distant country in the storms of life with no lifeboat, life ring, and all hope is gone of a way out or a way back. You see that you're not on the right path. Oh, I'm sorry. The son thinks about this, and he makes a decision to go back to his father and ask for repentance. You think about the decisions that you're making in your life. You think about the loving family and friends that you're leaving behind, the loving family that is wanting you to come back is mourning over your decision to not attend church. So you make plans to go back that Sunday, ask for forgiveness, and be, and be with your family once more. I am lost, and now I'm found. <laughs> In Numbers 22-34, Balaam said to the angel of, of the Lord, I have sinned. I do not realize you are standing in the road to oppose me. Now you are dis displeased. I will go back. In 1 Samuel 15 and verse 24, Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have tran transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. And that right there is the issue with younger Christians today. 
I have struggled with this myself personally too. It's the need to be popular in school. The need to be accepted by all the people that don't matter. To be loved by those who won't love you back. And to be around those people that will only drag you down. Society today has changed a lot from 2012. Social media has made an impact on political and social norms and has made my life socially more difficult and made me struggle with finding true friendship or true love. Being a Christian to some is weird. Who cares? You care though. Because you're going to change what you do to please those who are not Christians. You're going to leave that sunny and nice weather to be with your to be with your friends, to be with those who think are going to carry you through life. And they might, because they have more money than you. They can support you and be there for you. But what happens when they're not? See, personally, I like being weird. Um, I like wearing two different socks all the time. And my parents hate it. Like, they despise me wearing two different socks. If they see me with two different socks on, they tell me to go back upstairs and change because I look like a quote-unquote hobo. It's very interesting terminology. But personally, like these socks right, right here, I want to get these socks because they're weird. They're different. It's my personality. Um, I see a lot on, on social media having intercourse before marriage is weird or is boring. So what? Be weird. Be boring. Who are they to tell you what's weird and what's boring? Because at the end of the day, you're in the sunshine. You're in the nice weather. They're drowning in the worldly pleasures, drowning in sin with no hope of coming out or going back. And they don't even know it. They don't realize it because they see that you don't want to have fun. You don't want to have alcohol beyond measure at your party, so you're boring. Be boring. I enjoy being boring because I don't go to parties often, so it gives me more time to lock myself in my basement and play video games. I mean video games, where nothing can go wrong unless someone else is lagging because they have horrible internet and they kill you before they even turn the corner. <coughs> or that one guy who plays video games 24-7 because he doesn't have a job and he hits you with the 87 hit combo before you can even get one hit in. Then video games kind of suck. But at the end of the day, you're being weird and boring because you're not sinning. No matter how weird you are, be a Christian. No matter how boring you are, be a Christian. Because the way I see it and what the Bible tells me is that at the end of the day, when all things are said and done and when Christ comes back, we're going to be in heaven being weird with Jesus Christ. We're going to be in heaven 
and the sunshine, the nice weather, with wealth beyond your wildest dreams. If you are visiting today and are searching for a church home, I would encourage that you think about this one. And if you are not a Christian and you are thinking of becoming one, I encourage you to come be weird with me as we stand together and sing the song of invitation. Tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an unclouded sky. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, they tell me of the smiles on his child to and his smile drives their sorrows away. And they tell me that no tears ever comes again. In that lovely land of unclouded day. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an unclouded sky. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Our next hymn would be hymn number six. And if you were unable to partake of the Lord's Supper this morning, the table is prepared. If you please come forward, there you and will and you'll be served. Hymn number six, we'll sing one verse. At last and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die. Would he devote that sacred head for such a one as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Please be seated. Let us pray for the bread. Dearly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Watch over us as we take thee of this bread, Lord, that represents your body as you suffered on the cross of Calvary, Lord. Help us take this in a manner that's willing to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray for the cup. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Watch over us, Lord, as we take thee this cup that represents the blood, Lord, as you shed it on the cross, Lord. Help us take this in a manner that's willing to you. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On the first day of the week, we're also commanded to give. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Help us open up our heart, Lord, to give a portion that's been given to us, Lord. Help us to um, open up our hearts and give um, as you required of us, Lord. And also watch over those, Lord, that are taking this money, these funds to help grow your body, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First of all, I want to say, Tavian, thank you so much for that lesson. It was a great lesson, and if you think life is difficult for you and you go back to 2012, try going back to 1965. Uh, many of us live in a totally different world, a world that we never could have envisioned at that particular time, and I think, John, you became an elder during that time, about that time. So just to... Uh, Pass some words of wisdom. Just keep on keeping on. Stay in the scripture. And if that was your prelude or your lesson that you plan to give the last to leaders, we wish you all the luck. And I can see you in the uh, winner's circle already. So uh, appreciate that lesson. Great job. Let's stand as we uh, have our closing prayer. Then we'll sing hymn number 412. We'll sing one verse of hymn number 412. Let us pray. Most Holy Father, we're so thankful. Thankful to you, Father, for your love. Thankful, Father, for an opportunity to come out on, again on this first day of the week that we may continue our worship to you. We pray, Father, that everything that we have done, not only this hour, but throughout the day, and our worship to you has been acceptable to you. We pray, Father, that you continue to be with us. Be with those, Father, who... Uh, suffering at this time because of the virus that's plaguing the world. We pray, Father, that you continue to be with those who are researching for a cure, the doctors and the caregivers who are attending to those who are affected by it, from it. Be with our members, Father, who are unable to be here because of the virus and uh, bad, poor immune system, systems and are following the directions of the doctors and the professionals who are giving guidance to us at this time. We pray, Father, that you continue to be with us, be with our leaders around the world. The most important, Father, believe if I be with our leaders here in the church as they continue to oversee the work and guide us. Forgive us, Father, for our sins. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Verse number one. On Jordan's stormy banks I stand and cast a wishful eye To Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie we will rest in the fair and happy land by and by, just across on the evergreen shore. Sing the song of Moses and the Lamb by and by, and dwell with Jesus evermore.